The Magic Umbrella One day, there was a girl who was running to catch the bus when she saw an umbrella walking towards her. Shen was scared, but she opened it. It was taking her higher and higher. It took her to Mars. Millions of aliens walked in a big circle around her. They said, beep, beep. All the way back at school, the teacher said, where is Jen? Right then, Jen's voice said, here I am. She had flown right through the window and into her chair. All about the author. Agnes made this when she was seven. Though known for her watercolor seascapes, Agnes found these unremarkable. Sloppy clouds dripped into the ocean. A bird's eye smudged and looked like glasses. Her paper got waterlogged and wavy, and her brushes frequently lost their hair. One time, on a family retreat, the sea made its whooshing sound like it was washing itself. Breakfast was cooked over a fire. Agnes looked dreamily into the fire. She looked closely at the embers where she saw the shape of a face. Her uncle said he had had a weird dream the night before. The telling of the dream went on and on. Eventually the dream ended and her uncle left her staring at the fire. The face in the fire was not just a coincidence of shapes. The fire was a creature and picked itself off the ground. The fire thing looked at Agnes. I hate when people retell their dreams, he said. Agnes could barely hear his voice. It was so very crackly. His legs were made of sticks. His arms, head, feet, knees, all sticks on fire. He walked with a snapping sound. Agnes followed the fireman to the ocean where he extinguished his flames. Then he was just sticks and wood. I have two styles, the stick man said. On fire and just sticks. Then he swam a bit in the ocean while Agnes watched. He was an excellent swimmer. Water shot through his arms. A couple sticks broke off and bobbed in the sea. All eyes turned when they stepped into the saloon. A man said, leave that firewood outside. Agnes was about to explain when everyone in the saloon cracked up because they were all friends with the stick man. The bartender stopped to shake his hand. A drink was placed in front of Agnes, but she was afraid. The man of sticks drank his drink and another was placed before him. A beautiful woman walked by and lit his head on fire with a match, flirting. He asked the beautiful woman to dance and left Agnes alone with her drink. The bartender looked at her suspiciously. Though she looked very human, she was the one who stuck out at the saloon, not the man of sticks. Her whole summer had been like this. All these people had already met her magic stick man. With a vague wave to the stick man, she left the saloon. The ocean crashed and spread. It made the sand a different color. It left bubbles in its wake. The ocean always seemed capable of teaching a lesson, but really it was just busy water. It didn't know you from anyone. The sea had a lot living in it, a lot riding on it, but really it just washed itself and sounded independent. The girl who wrote this is Jo. At 15 years, Jo is very tall and never seems to know what to do with her long limbs, which are very much in her way. Elizabeth, or Beth as everyone calls her, is a rosy, smooth-haired, bright-eyed girl of 13, with a shy manner and a timid voice. Amy, though the youngest, is a most important person, in her own opinion at least. What the characters of the four sisters are, we will leave to be found out. These are the popular sisters from Louisa May Alcott's widely read Little Women. Louisa acted out plays with her sisters and went on nature walks. One summer, Louisa had a crush on the shadow of a tree. She was appreciative of lace. Growing up, her best friend was a spoon. She praised all objects, even shoddily made ones. She did not condescend to animals. She wrote poems and got them published under nonsense names. Wiggle M. Jenkins, Sneeze S. Breeze. Many of her friends married, but she remained single. 
Louisa May might have been a lesbian or an intellectual. Her book Moods was a precursor to Lava Lamps. A known civil rights and women's rights advocate, Louisa installed the first washroom in the Underground Railroad. She had a bout of bad luck and dropped a very expensive jar of jam. Some say her sisters never forgave her. While other women were out dancing and spending money in Europe, Louisa was blowing her parents' noses. Her overnight success with little women was a shock to the nation. She did cartwheels across a field. Louisa wrote Little Men, but it was less fun than she'd thought. Glumly, she swept her house. Louisa wore a lot of layers. She devoted herself fully to her family and her writing. She kept pets, and when each died, grimly got another. She sat. She waited. She thought. For years, she wrote an autobiography with flourishes and new additions. In this autobiography, she cared for a lamb named Noel. When she was finished, she didn't want to stop working. She began the laborious task of typesetting the book. She made only one copy. It took her half a year. On the day her book was in its complete state, she read it cover to cover. It is extravagant to read a book all about oneself. Louisa felt vain and excited, and then she forgot about it. Readers, I am that book. My cover is linen and worn. I'm 214 pages in total. I am well over a hundred years. I am positive I am worth a lot of money. Presently, I am squished between others in a rare books collection. I sit next to a first edition of The Great Gatsby. I have read that book 50 times since my arrival. I am an avid reader. Many books don't care about reading. I have read so many books. I'm wild about Nabokov. I dislike, I dislike Kerouac and the other deadbeats. When there are no books of value to occupy me, I read myself. There was a whole decade I got bored. I just sat there. I did not read. We might call what I did meditating, but readers, that would be dressing it up. I was surrounded by slick covers of paperback reprints. I had little inclination to be. Then one day, a reader spoke aloud to me. How I struggled to speak back. My binding made a crack, but that is all, my friends. My life lacks movement, interaction, and event, but I do not expect these things of it. As a life, mine is vicarious, but I suppose most are. It is seldom a book is exposed to the outdoors. More than anything, I desire to attend a symphony. A zoo would be amusing. I imagine I'd keep my shape. Frankly, I do not crave a body. A face is intriguing how it moves and learns, develops, displays. But the mouth has always seemed messy to me. Hair, I imagine, to be a chore. Hi guys, thanks for listening to me. That was a shortened version of the story, The Magic Umbrella, which is from my book, Pee on Water. I just want to thank Text Gallery for having me, and special thanks to Colin Wynette, who's been very um, enthusiastic and encouraging throughout the last few weeks. And have a great night.